if you're watching this video right now you are most likely considering how to improve the productivity of your layer ends yes you want to improve the production the daily production of your layers but before we go into that i think we should look at we should ask the question is it possible to actually get above what you're currently getting it may be 70 percent you are getting right now it may be 75 percent and probably you still have some profit out of that but then you are looking at my offer is 90 something percent possible is it actually possible is it worth watching this video to the end yes it is 100 percent possible and to tell you that to affirm that we are going to be focusing on the data from the producers of the breed called isa brown yes in this video i'm going to be measuring on the isa brown breed because it's it's like the most productive breed that we have in nigeria that we use in nigeria the isa brown we also have the um the bovans nera otherwise called um, black nera but then we are focusing on isa brown in this video so is it possible to get above what you are currently getting again i say yes yes and yes so stick with me while i give you the tips to help you improve production on your farm it can happen anywhere you can replicate what i'm going to tell you here you can replicate it on your farm you're going to get the same great result over 90 percent is possible as you can do it so stick with me yeah welcome back to my channel diy hagri i'm your number one animal scientist and your poultry success partner so if you're interested in videos that will help you achieve good success in your poultry farming business i mean videos that will help you get better performance of your broiler beds better performance of your layer beds then this is the channel you want to subscribe to right away if you want to get notified anytime i post new videos you want to click the notification bell so let's quickly dive into what we have to discuss today how to improve productivity of your layers yes back to the data i promised to share with you according to those who manufactured the isa brown breed you can get up to 96 percent production and the production 96 percent from the breed at their peak period yes peak period is the time where the end lay the highest number of eggs at their peak you can actually get up to 96 percent and the production wow that's huge and that's you you must be saying is this achievable is this possible yes it is it is and the only reason why you are not getting the same result the only reason why you are not getting that result on your farm is because things are not equal if i would go back to that 96 i would say all things being equal you get 96 but because things are not equal so how hard can you try to make things equal how hard can you try to make to make the environment conducive to provide all the necessary things you need to provide just to get that result i'm going to be sharing with you those tips right away yeah the number one step towards achieving this kind of result 96 percent or at least close to heat is choosing the right breed and don't forget i mentioned isa brown as the best egg laying breed available to us in nigeria yes and in a video i did earlier i was comparing the isa brown to the noila some people were starting to say that the noila is also is a is, the noila is also a good egg, egg laying breed but then the noila is inferior to the isa brown you can't just compare the two isa browns are egg laying machines so you want to choose the right breed for you and also when you're choosing the isa brown not all brown hens are isa brown so you want to ensure that you stick to only the reputable sources and you get your isa brown from them the second thing is vaccination layers have a comprehensive vaccination schedule and if you don't want to have problem later in production time you want to ensure that you complete all those vaccinations you give them all the required vaccines that they need to take including the head drop syndrome and all manner of um vaccines that you need to give them it is very important you don't try to minimize spending that you now skip some vaccines no try as much as possible to give them the right vaccine at the right time and the third and very important point is biosecurity a lot of us because we can't see diseases with our eyes with the naked eye we just want to forget to do some things or we just 
we omit some things. We, uh, mm. It doesn't matter. No, it all matters. The foot deep at the entrance of your pen, you avoiding strangers into your pen anyhow. All the biosecurity measures you need to take, they are important. You don't wait until you have diseases before you put biosecurity into place. I'm going to be showing you the layer production curve very soon and I will explain to you the role that diseases play in bringing down the production of your layers. So biosecurity is very vital. Another thing is the quality of water. A lot of us when we take dirty or contaminated water, we come down with typhoid, we come down with cholera and all manner of diseases. Some of us even have rashes just because we change the environment and we change water. But the kind of water that a lot of farmers give their chickens are the water that they cannot take. And that is very, very bad. It is detrimental to the health of your layers and it reduces their production. Yes, you won't see the number of eggs you're supposed to see because all the nutrients that are supposed to be channeled towards egg, egg production are being channeled towards production of antibodies to fight diseases and all that. So you need to provide your um, layers with the comfort zone. Give them fresh, clean, cool water all day. Yeah, our next point here is sticking to a routine sticking to a routine if you already get the value from this video i'd like you to hit the like button and also the subscribe button so you join this community so sticking to a routine if you are giving your birds feed let's say around 7 30 in the morning or 8 a.m in the morning and maybe around one you you like spread the feed and if there are places where there are no feed you try to supplement you had to the feed over there and maybe in the evening later before you close around four or five maybe you give them another feed you want to stick to that routine layers are very very sensitive they are very very sensitive they are already expectant of feed at those times because this is the time you normally give them so they are expecting feed it's very related to the milk letdown in milking cows when you take them into the milking parlor at the around at around the time they normally go once they sight the valve the the milking machines now in the milking parlor they start the process of milk letdown begins inside their system and they easily let down milk so the same thing applies to layers they are they are sensitive and they are aware of those routines so if you are the type that like to give them around eight please stick to that routine if it is 7 30 stick to that routine it is very important so that you don't create any kind of stress whatsoever to your birds to add to the note on routine this is why it is very important for your farm attendants to have a very friendly uniform yes friendly in the sense that the uniform that they put on when they are entering uh, the layer pen where the eggs are being collected should be a friendly one the color should not be too bright the only place where bright colors are needed is when you are talking about the nipple drinker that like you, you want to attract the birds you want to tell them okay this is where your water is those are the areas where you need uh, flashy colors and maybe the feeders but even in the case of layers you don't really need uh, attractive feeder because they are inside a cage and they have access to the feed all the time so because the water is eating that's why you need attractive colors to um, draw their attention to the nipple drinker and when they peck it they see water they uh, start to drink so wearing a friendly color and being consistent at it is important you don't just come today with yellow and tomorrow you're just walking with purple they're like wow who is this who is this so it's not the face that they recognize per se, but the color, they are sensitive to the color. So you are, if you do that, if you are, come inside with a pen with a flashy color, you are just introducing a stressor. You are stressing the birds and that will have effect on their egg production. Some things that I'm, I'll be seeing, they are minute. They are like, wow, is this crazy? How can color impact egg production? But this minute, things these minute elements will impact your egg production don't forget poultry is a science and there are ways that you must do it to get the kind of results that you want to get yeah don't forget i'll be showing you the layer production curve very soon that will help you to understand some metrics and also help you to achieve a better result uh, quickly 
So the next thing now is housing. The housing is not so much important when it comes to the area of materials that you use to build the house, but there are some basic needs that you need to meet. It must protect the, uh, the beds from sun and from rain. That's, those two are very, very important. And there must be good ventilation within the house. So that's about the house. And then the final thing before we go to the layer production curve is feeding. Yes, feeding. I say this a lot of time. Most of the times farmers go for cheap feed, but you know, most of the feed that are good are expensive. Yes, why money or the price tag does not really translate into the quality of the feed, most of the good feed out there are quite expensive, but you will get your results. You will get your results in the end. So it is important that you don't try to be stingy when it comes to spending money on feed because feed already takes about 70%, 60 to 70% of the production when it comes to layer farming. So be open to spending on quality feed. If you spend on quality feed, you get the results. Don't try to just serve your layers with anything. Anything will not work. You need quality feed. They need to be the nutrient requirement of the bed need to be met, and it is very very important. Also, apart from quality of feed, the quantity also matters. The quantity of also matters. One funny thing about layers is, if you are supposed to give them 115 or 120 grams of uh, feed per day, I mean each bed now, if you give them 100 grams, you are only feeding them to to maintain themselves. There's what we call maintenance ration and there's a ration for production. So the maintenance ration has to be met first before the production ration. The production ration is like an additional unit to the maintenance ration. So if you reduce the quantity of feed, you are just like giving them what they need to be okay but not what they need to produce eggs. So you need to meet the maintenance ration and then meet their need for production also. Yeah, so that's one very important thing about feeding that many people would not tell you. So right now, let me take you to the layer production curve and explain the metrics that we have over there. Okay, so this is the this is a typical production curve. Sorry, I'm trying to capture as much detail as I can without having to put my phone under the sun. So we have the percentage production here, percentage production zero to hundred, and we have the months here: yeah? second month, fourth month, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen to 18. That's about the time we engage our layers in lane. And according to the Issa Brown. Um, the company that produced Isa Brown, the breed is supposed to attain 50% production at around, say, 21 weeks or thereabout. So, first thing I want you to target is that your peak, after the start production, the peak period should be between the second month to the third month. Try as much as possible to get them to the peak you just do all that is necessary anyway you just feed them right give them the normal medication and all that but once your bed are, your beds are able to attain their peak say around the third month they are at their peak this is when you need to engage all forces possible you need to educate your workers and all that coco come on stop that that thing is making noise so you need to engage your employee employees Tell them, educate them that they should do everything possible to maintain this peak. This is where many people jeopardize their profits. Yes. If you're able to maintain this peak for, say, let's say this your peak that you got, let's say it's around 89% peak. Maybe you are not able to achieve 90 plus. If you're able to get 89%, which is still very good. A lot of people don't get that. So let's say you got that and you're able to maintain that peak for say four to five months. Wow, that's good. That's going to make a, a huge difference in your profit margin. It's going to make a huge difference in your profit margin because a lot of people don't even get that. Some people are able to push their peak to just say just 75%. And if they're slack with it, maybe in the second month of peak there's a disease that they're allowed to to stay for a while before they are able to treat it maybe the best and layers they don't have to recover 
very quickly. So maybe it took them another three weeks or so before they struggled back to 70 and they are at that end of peak. But if you're able to maintain this peak for a long time, wow, you are going to be the phenomenal farmer. So this is what many people will not tell you. And if you're able to maximize this metric I'm showing you here, you are going to enjoy your farming business. So if you're able to say you maintain the peak for four to five months, and then even after the peak, it doesn't just go down straight. So it starts to descend gradually. And let's say in under three or four months, after the end of peak your gut, you still have 82% production. That's still fine. And before you start to have 70%, the hens are already around their one year. When some people are getting 72, 75 at their own peak, you are getting it at around maybe 10 months into lay or 11 months. So before you still have another six months to manage them before around 70 something. Oh. Coco, I'll beat you. Yeah, sorry, my daughter almost knocked the camera off the tripod. So you should still be able to get some very reasonable uh, production even after one year. So you're already preparing the next batch of ends to come in and start production again. And you maybe at the time you are selling your beds, you are still having about say 60, 60 to 65 percent production, which is good. It still pays for the feeding of the birds so this is something that is very very important i would like you to take advantage of it so that is that about maximizing your layer production so if you think you've got value from this video i'd like you to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos thank you very much for watching this long bye bye